Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today I am going to be making some art with these paints here. Now these actually glow under UV light. Now I have actually used these in the past uh, in a recent video but I didn't own this little flashlight here which is a black light and it creates UV rays so basically these paints will glow under it. Now I'm just going to demonstrate the effect they have on this paper here. As you can see it basically just glows under the under the light but the paper behind won't. I have some rough ideas of a way that I could use these paints specifically so that they sort of change the look once they are glowing under the UV light. Now as you can see I'm just smearing the paint around a little bit and you can sort of get a rough idea of how these look on the black paper that I'm going to be using today. Now using these in the past I have found out they are quite transparent they're not very opaque so I think it's going to be a little bit of a challenge uh, trying to get them to look the way I want to on this black paper here. But uh, that's why I'm going to allow myself to use a few other colours as well. Last time I actually allowed myself to use a white but only a white. But today I'm actually going to be allowing myself to use any other colours. But uh, the main effect we're going to get today is with these paints. Now before we actually begin the painting process, I want to start off with a little bit of sketch. And I'm just using this black paper here as I mentioned earlier. And I'm just sketching on the top with a lead pencil. And that actually works out pretty well when uh, I'm, I'm drawing on black paper because it sort of has like a, sort of like a metallic kind of effect. So you can still see it on black paper, which I really like. And the idea that I wanted to try and paint today was uh, a, a mushroom. Now I'm going to try and experiment a little bit with bioluminescence, which basically means like, you know, plants and animals that glow in real life. And this actually does happen with some species of plants and animals. And I wanted to try and see if I could capture that using uh, these paints. So I've just sketched up a little mushroom here. Now I'm actually just adding a few to the bottom of the page as well. And this is because I want to have a little bit more detail than just a mushroom. <laughs> so I added a few little ones sort of around the base of the big main mushroom. Now I'm just adding some little details over the top, like, uh, you know, little spots on the mushroom. I'm not sure if that makes it a mushroom or a toadstool. I don't really know the difference between the two. And after this, I wanted to have a little creature sitting on top of the mushroom because I just felt like that would be really cute. And I came up with the idea of the creature being a frog. <laughs> and uh, honestly, his face looks really cute. He does look kind of derpy, but I'm, I'm hoping I can fix that up in the, the painting process. But I kind of just want him sort of like, like sloped over the mushroom and his like little front arms are sort of hanging down and his back is uh, more towards the back side so you can't really see it too much. And he just looks like he's lazily chillaxing there and uh, yeah it's my rough idea for the sketch and I think it looks pretty cute. Now I actually mentioned how I did a previous painting with these paints and how uh, I actually never got to see what it looks like glowing under the UV light and I have to say uh, I'm definitely going to show it today because I know you guys uh, commented in the comments and really wanted to see it so here it is and I'm so surprised with how different the vibe was I don't know why I just felt like it would look the same but you know glowing <laughs> but no honestly it looks so cool because I used that white in the background obviously the white paint didn't glow under UV light so what actually ended up happening was the highlights and the, the shadows sort of Swapped. And I really love how the flowers turned into black and red flowers. I just think that looks so cool and it gives it almost like a creepy like weird radioactive kind of vibe to a landscape instead of the more sort of normal feeling one. And I just felt like it looks so cool like look at this compared to the original and then like back to the creepy vibe. It just looks so cool and different and I love it. It actually makes me love this painting even more. So anyways, back to the painting here. I've got the sketch done now. And I'm just adding in some layers of paint to begin. And I'm actually using some white on the stem part of the mushroom. And this is because I want it to be a light color. And it's gonna be a little bit difficult making a light color with transparent 
ish paints over a black surface I would have to do like hundreds of layers and then it would be like super super saturated and that's definitely not what I wanted and I sort of had to be a little bit careful with this paper because I don't think this paper is specifically made for <laughs> paints it is quite thin it's more like sketch paper and I have used it for paints in the past but uh, once I add that paint on, I kind of have to do it in like thin-ish layers and try not to saturate it too much because otherwise the paper will buckle. And you can kind of see that a little bit already. There's a slight buckling, but once it dries, it uh, dries pretty flat. So yeah, I added a few layers of white to obviously the stalk of the mushroom, but also the lower mushrooms as well as some of the spots on top of the the big mushroom <laughs> and then also some white for the uh, frog's eyes now i used my craft heat gun tool to to sort of speed up the drying time <laughs> of those paints and then i kept adding some layers over the top until it was nice and opaque now it's time to move on to the frog here while I let that completely, you know, completely dry. <laughs> and I'm just adding in some regular acrylic paint first because I want to have some sections of this uh, glow under the light and then have some sections like not glow. So with that, I'm going to like try and see if I can change the lighting uh, position, like the way things are shaded when it's, you know, glowing and when it has, you know, normal light on it. I'm just doing a few layers on this frog here as you can see once I got the base layer of green done I went in and uh, while it was still wet I added a few layers of um, white and also a darker mix of green so that I could have some nice shading on him because um, I still want to have some like you know subtle shadows and highlights here and there even though it's not going to show when it's glowing. After this I decided to go into the underside of the mushroom here and I decided to give it a few stripes as you can see um, and I actually decided to see what, what would happen if I just put that you know semi transparent color over the black because I know I said I didn't want to do that but that was in some areas and I want to still sort of experiment a little bit in other sections so that we have sort of different effects in each area. And uh, as you can see, once it dries, it doesn't look the best. It's uh, definitely a bit patchy. And uh, I'm just using my heat gun tool again to dry that quickly because I am impatient and I don't want to wait for it to dry. But then I just added more layers of that same paint over the top until I got something which was not completely opaque. It was still quite see-through, but a little bit less patchy. And as you can see with the light here, it does look really cool. I like the way that it really does glow under this light and any other colors like the frog or the, the white sections or the black from the background doesn't glow. So it kind of looks like it's only, you know, putting light onto the areas that I painted, which is cool. After this, I decided to go into the mushroom uh, top where the spots aren't obviously <laughs> and I went in with a mix of magenta and white so it was like a nice light pink color and I did a few layers of that and I decided on pink because I felt like it was you know different enough from the colors that were on there but still within that sort of color palette so I think it worked pretty well. And yeah, once I got that layer nice and, uh, you know, <laughs> nice layered on there pretty well. And since I mixed a lot of white with that color, it actually was quite opaque. I went over the top with uh, just a little bit of the pure magenta color and I added in some shadows around this mushroom. And that's obviously because, as I said before, I wanted to have subtle shading in this and I feel like the magenta really helped make the colors pop really nicely. And uh, I think it looks pretty good. So once I got that section where I wanted it to be, I, after that, moved on to the stalk area. Now this uh, took a little bit of experimentation because I just put a nice layer of that orange over the top of the white. And then I decided I didn't really like the look of that uh, that much and I added a little bit of white over the top and then I sort of blended that so it was a little bit more subtle. At this point I decided I wanted to add a bit of purple into the illustration because I felt like I just needed a, a sort of a cooler color in there to balance things a little bit and the purple worked out pretty well. I added that to the stalks of the little tiny mushrooms at the bottom. And while that was drying I went back into the larger stalk area just to fix up some of the shadows and highlights because that was uh, dry enough that I could add another layer over the top 
and yeah, just added more of that orange to the shadows, a little bit more white to the highlights. And then I added in some of the same pink to the tops of the mushrooms. Now, since I had some of that leftover pink color, I just added a little bit extra around the white areas on the large spots on the mushroom because I wanted to give them the look as if they were glowing a little bit. After this, it was time to fix up some of those white areas because they got covered up a little bit with some of the pink paint. So I went back over that so it was nice and opaque and then I grabbed a little tiny paintbrush and uh, added in those little tiny spots that I had drawn in the original sketch because obviously I didn't want to you know remove them but I didn't want to paint around the pink any anywhere because that would take too much time so of course I just put a nice layer of pink over it and then after that I added in the spots and that's so much easier than having to paint around each spot individually <laughs> By this time it got to a point where each area had most of the details on there that I wanted but I just had to go back into different sections to try and just change uh, the shading and the highlights and stuff like that until I was happy with it because it kind of had a little bit of an ugly stage as you can see. Uh, some of the colours are still a little bit patchy and uh, the outlines aren't perfect and uh, the colours aren't exactly where I want them to be so it kind of looks a little bit ugly to me so I just had to keep working in each section until I was happy with it. So now we're up to the fun part here and I have got out some of the fluorescent a yellow paint and I'm adding it on to the sections of the mushroom that have all of the white spots. <laughs> so basically I had to trace over all of those little white spots with the yellow so that they would glow. I had to actually do a few layers of them as well because I felt like uh, when, I, when I shined the light on them it just didn't look as solid as I wanted it to so I had to sort of hold the flashlight while I was painting and then just like add more you know bits of paint into areas that needed to glow more and it was actually quite fun holding that flashlight and seeing the way that the paint looked while I was painting instead of like just hoping for the best. After this I actually added a little bit of uh, yellow onto the pink mushrooms down the bottom but I kind of instantly regretted that because it turned them orange and I didn't like that at all. <laughs> so I basically just painted over them again and then added in some of that pink fluorescent over the top which is what I should have done in the beginning and uh, yeah it looks pretty cool. After this I went into the frog and I used some normal yellow paint, not fluorescent yellow paint, to add in uh, the, the area below his mouth where his chin is. And then after that I added in some gr like darker green colours to add um, some shadows on there because I just couldn't be happy with it. <laughs> and then after this I added in some fluorescent green to uh, areas on the frog and on the mushroom where I wanted some more, you know, brightness and colour. Now this part was probably the most fun. I held that flashlight again and I painted in uh, some fluorescent green on the frog just in areas where I wanted to have highlights while it was in the dark, which was really fun because I was able to experiment with um, sort of like the... I don't know the glowing effect I guess I didn't want the frog to be glowing itself I wanted the frog to look like uh, light from the mushrooms was like reflecting off him so he was like lit up by these mushrooms which I think was a really good idea because it turned out really cool but at this time I still felt like the painting needed something I felt like there wasn't enough uh, detail down below especially you know either side of those mushrooms and uh, above that as well so I decided to add in last minute uh, some little glowing bugs so I basically just uh, wet the paint quite a bit and I did a lot of circular motions to try and get like a glowing effect and then after that I went over them with some white so that I could have uh, the shape of a little tiny glow bug and then once that was dry I painted over the top of it with um, some yellow so it would basically glow more than the effect around it. And then after this I wanted the effect to be even more apparent so what I actually did was in some areas uh, very sparingly I added in 
little bits of white highlights here and there on the frog and then after that was dry I painted over it with the fluorescent green it would really shine brightly once I uh, flashed the uh, flashlight on it after I did that I decided to add in the same sort of effects on the mushrooms below because I felt like it would look really cool and uh, once I added that pink over the top you couldn't really see it too much compared to the regular pink that I painted that with so that was really good because it would uh, be more it would be more obvious once I, you know, showed it in the dark versus the light. After this, I felt like it still needed uh, something to solidify the details and uh, just add a little bit more color. So what I actually did was I took a purple Posca pen, which is a paint pen, and then I added in an outline all the way around the outside of it. And I also added in some outlines around some details like the frog and, um, some of the spots on the mushrooms as well and for the frog in some details I actually took uh, one of my fine point uh, paint pens and then I added in uh, details like the eyes I outlined some areas like the mouth and the feet and stuff like that and I actually really like the way that it looks because it adds a nice pop of color it adds more purple to the top part of the illustration because at the time there was only purple at the bottom and the colored outline really gives it a cool effect too because it kind of you know enhances that sort of psychedelic kind of vibe and I feel like it really brought the whole thing together quite a bit more which I really really like so anyways, here is the final results of it when it is, uh, you know, in normal lighting and uh, I think it looks really, really cool, but I feel like it, uh, it looks so cool once it's, you know, in the dark and the UV light is on it. I just think the colors look super interesting and uh, I love how the mood changes once it's in the bright light and then it's in like the dark light and it's glowing. I love it. I think it looks awesome. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. This was super fun for me to experiment with and I'm glad I got to get these paints out again for a second video because they're really fun. Interesting to try, but uh, you know, once you once you get the, the way of how they work, you can really do some really cool stuff with them. And I'm really glad I got to actually see how the other painting worked as well. Um, it surprised me. It was really cool. Anyways, thanks again. I hope to see you in my next video and I hope you're all staying safe out there. And uh, yeah, comment below what you think of this painting and if you've tried these paints at all. I really like to hear your opinions on stuff and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye everyone.